Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of the R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly Federal Appeal in Brooklyn and the Chicago trial. This is more or less perspective relating to what is going wrong in the trial today that will be a precedent to look at what we can see for an appeal. So that's where this is headed. That's where this segment is headed. So if it doesn't involve what's going on right this moment in the case, it's because we're looking at it futuristically. So as we know yesterday, there was a big situation on allowing the jurors in based on how much they knew about the case. So, you know, Bonjean went through the motions the day before. Um, some people felt that she is very lax on how fast she moves her motions. Sometimes the motions are not on time. And I know that over the weekend, it is very risky um, to file an appeal or file a motion regarding um, rebuttal of what is being put on the docket. But you got to look at the fact that she's only one person. She only has a firm with only a few people. And, th and this is not her only case. She also has to look at the information with a keen eye in order to even understand that this is being done. Okay. So let's try to give her the benefit of the doubt because she is the only loyal attorney that stuck and stayed with Robert through this scenario. So many of those uh, people on the defense side may feel that what the prosecution is doing is very biased and unfair. And um, we saw that yesterday, according to how the system looks on the outside, without law, without legality, without more information okay that's why i read the the briefs and the motions so that you'll get a clear understanding of what's really going on so many on the defense side feels that the way lewin weber handled the choice to reject the motion was unfair he's going to allow these individuals into the trial to listen to the evidence to decide knowing a lot more than what they are normally expected to know. So I get that, that fear. I get that, you know, that unclear expectation. However, as a criminal justice person, one is expected to look at the dynamics and the balance of both prosecution and defense. So I want you to go along this journey with me. You guys know I am all pro Robert, okay? But in order to bring about a clarity and an understanding of what is going on in this court case, we have to look at it from both sides and balance the fulcrum. And so looking at it from both sides, we're gonna see two things we're going to see number one that this has been a recurring situation within the history of the defendant meaning that in 2008 he was indicted he was tried he was found not guilty so the information was still there, but he was found not guilty because there wasn't enough of it, okay? But then on the other hand, later, decades later, more victims come to the forefront. And now without any further ado, you now have those people back there in 2008 saying, see, I told you, but you didn't listen government you didn't listen to me 
So now what is happening is the government is saying, wow, maybe we did mess something up. Maybe we didn't, you know, listen like we were supposed to listen. So there are two things that's happening here. There is a reoccurring situation within the history of Robert. Since that is the case, then number two comes into play. Was Robert given his day in court fair, unbiased, and un, you know, disrespected based on the circumstances? And our answer is yes. He was given his day in court in 2008. He was tried. He had a jury. The jury deliberated. And the jury found that there was nothing as far as evidence worth incarcerating him or finding him guilty on those counts. Okay, so that's where we need to pause. Everybody's happy, all is well. Kells goes home, 2008. It's all good. We having a backyard party. Everything is fine. But then you have these people who felt that they weren't heard. So, you know, have you ever heard that the system slow walks the defendant? And so basically what happens is if this comes up again, they're going to be a lot more, um, less lenient. They're going to be a lot more, you know, like being on punishment. Okay. Now you come back with the same thing, but now you have individuals saying different things. And now you have other women coming forward at this particular time, whether it's staged or not. Let's not look at the fact that it is, you know, all a setup. Let's pull that away from the curtain. Put that on the back burner because we're going to come back to that. When we talk about appeal, we're going to definitely come back to that. But he was given his day in court. It was fair and it was unbiased. The jury found him not guilty. But Robert had his official day in court in 2008. He was acquitted of all charges due to the facts not being clear. But years later, the same types of charges emerge. But it's within a new set of circumstances. So now you have new victims. And I believe this is why the docuseries needed to come forth because these individuals needed to show even if these are lies or not, that the voices of people needed to be taken seriously. And I understand the implication of the Me Too movement throwing this in precisely at the right time in order to get what they wanted. I get that, but put that on the back burner. Put that alongside with the fact that, you know, all this will be handled in appeal. I don't know why we have to do it this way, but I think it's because of all the information. And as we talked about yesterday in the clip with NBC, I put that out there for us to be mindful to the fact that this is not, this has been an ongoing occurrence in the historical lifespan of Robert in the music industry. So we cannot be ignorant to that fact because ignorance is not a defense in a court of law. OK, and I know a lot of y'all pissed off at me right now, but I got to break this down because eventually in the appeal, we're going to look at these things and these things are going to come up again. So years later, the same type of charges emerge within a new set of circumstances. Now you have people who feel that they've been coerced. You, you have people who feel that they've been paid off. You find people who say that they've been, 
you know, abused mentally by this person, defendant Robert Sylvester Kelly. So the point of this segment is to make us aware of the legalities within the case. Okay, because these individuals are back again. They're back again. And again, Robert is saying, I did not. One thing that is consistent is Robert saying, I did not do this. So one thing we have to realize when we're raising children, when we're parents, when we're dealing with, you know, individuals who may not understand what part they play in the scenario or circumstances that when the same statement is being said over and over and over it's a habitual thing now i'm not saying that robert did all this 100 percent. absolutely not what i am saying is that no one is perfect and he's already admitted to not being perfect so what part did he play in this and that's where my mind and curiosity runs today um knowing that yes the system is definitely going above and beyond what they need to go when it is relating to Robert. And I am here 100% for you, Robert, in that instance, because there are a lot of things that I see from a standpoint that I've been trained to see. I've been educated to see this and I see the injustice, but also has one put themselves in the hot seat? And it's like, okay, we're gonna give you that opportunity. It's not enough information in 2008. We're gonna tell you, okay, get yourself together. And I'm sure that there were people who said that even if this was a situation and you didn't do anything, you got off free, but go get yourself some help. You know right from wrong because you've already been through the court system. It's kind of like me. I've already been through that court system. If I choose to go back, I will. If I choose not to, I won't. So, so he walked freely and everyone was happy. No one had a situation or a question in their mind in 2008. The same statement still resides 20 years later, 25 years later. He did not do what they have accused him of doing. He states that. I do believe that is not him on the sex tape because if it was, because if it was, there would have been some type of forensic study on that tape. They didn't go through all that in 2008. And I don't believe they didn't go through it because of the fact that he paid anyone off. I believe they didn't go through it because it wasn't enough evidence, period, point blank. But because it revisited itself Decades later, now they can go back and revamp that question. Ah, that's why he got off because he was paying people off. He was doing this. We don't know what that money was used for. Again, he had a enterprise, which is a business like any other LLC, incorporation, nonprofit in the world today. So what he did within his financial areas of his business is between him and the IRS. Now, if they got information and documentation from the IRS based on the breakdown of the information, maybe that's the reason why he was able to um, get off on 2008 charge because of the fact that he was able to show that and prove that. I paid this person off because there was a contract between this person and me, their parents and me because of some music, something, whatever it was, he was able to explain it. And it was explainable enough to the point that the jury believed it. Okay. I do not believe that was him on the sex tape. I do believe that the information could have been tampered with on that video and it should be thrown out. I don't believe that it should be a reoccurring thing, but I think they're making it a reoccurring thing to show the jury that this has happened before. And this is how serious it was in 2008, but that he was acquitted. 
So they're going to use that very, very thing to reduplicate the upcoming 2022 trial that can make or break the jury. I do believe the information could have been tampered with. But put that on the back burner too, along with the other three. So now we have three items on the back burner for the appeal. However, the question on the docket today is did Robert Sylvester Kelly manipulate the information that created indecisiveness and fear in those who did not testify? What are your thoughts? I mean, I know y'all might be pissed at me right now, but I have to look at this from a balanced fulcrum. And I have to say, I was not in that bedroom with Robert when he was intimate with whoever he was intimate in with. Nobody was. And guess what? Nobody should be. And guess what? No one should care what went on in that bedroom with Robert and his sexual counterparts. But the question on the docket now is, did he manipulate with his funds and his ability to move money? Did he manipulate the information that created indecisiveness and fear in those who did not testify? Because that's the new separate issue that the court is looking at right now that the jury today must be able to deliberate and understand. And that's all the judge Lennon Weber is bringing in as far as the rules and the laws. And we're gonna go over what the jurors can and cannot do to Robert based upon say today. And these are just basic principles of criminal justice law. That's gonna be difficult to answer as a juror on the docket, whether he manipulated the information that created indecisiveness and fear in those who did not testify. No one's gonna be able to really get to that answer. Why? Because number one, they were not there. Number two, because he was acquitted. And number three, all of a sudden you have a bunch of people coming forth that did not come forth in 2008. But then they can also use, prosecution can also use the fact that, yes, this was in between those decades. Andrea Kelly should be excluded. Her, her voice should not matter. Just like in trial, any wife, and this was when I was in college, it might've changed. Okay. The laws might've changed. No wife could um, testify against her husband. So being a juror, even under the circumstances of knowing everything about the case, they might as well go over the discovery and explain it explicitly so they'll understand, so that they can determine the difference between the 2008 situation and the 2022 situation with the obstruction. If they do that, I can see Lewin Weber giving the jurors and the ability to make a conscious blessed decision. This would in turn not need to be appealed upon because the jury, jury knows it all. This is a different type of a case. Trust and know many people have, you know, seen the allegations along the way. Even if they haven't saw the docuseries, they, they've heard enough. And this is what NBC was sharing when that attorney talked to us yesterday on that clip with NBC. And that's why I put this here. So being a juror, even under the circumstances of knowing everything about the case, like what social media is saying, one must give the juror the same opportunity in 2022 as America gave the jurors in 2008 in order for it to be fair on both ends. Because we don't know and we need to find out. At what point do we say that we don't know and that we are confused as an as American society? We are confused. 
because all we can say here, and this is what I he see as an observer to the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel, is that he didn't do it. These women are lying. They're a bunch of, you know, money hungry people and they're da 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 and da 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 and da da da. But we did not say that in 2008. And I want you to be mindful of this only because it's going to come up in the appeal. Okay. This is going to be part of how we're going to maneuver through this. And it's not about emotion and about what these women may or may not have done because of money hungry wanting it all or because they were, you know, conflicted in emotion because they weren't the only woman. What I want you to know is that many sound like they're unclear to which side they choose to take. And I know I may sound like that right now. I may sound like I am going towards the prosecution side and I'm not. I'm not. This is not the case. I am 100% pro Robert Sylvester Kelly. 100% pro Robert. But I have to bring this out because this is how the system is doing what it's doing. And we are constantly stuck in that same warp zone of it's not fair. The judge is in, in uh, the judge is biased. The judge is, you know, causing this chaos. Okay. This is not the case. I am all 100% Robert Sylvester Kelly. Other than that, I wouldn't have an R. Kelly appeal TV. However, I also know what the government knows as well. That's why I'm bringing this here to you because ignorance is not a defense in a court of law. Don't go on their court to play ever because the criminal justice system does not play fairly for a defense to win. It is one-sided, yes, and that is their side. That's what they're supposed to do. Like I'm an entrepreneur. My job is to create business. That's what I do every day. I work towards creating business. I'm not working towards de destroying business, no. So why would I be on the other side try, trying to make this person look good that people are saying is not looking good? And so, so... I know what the government knows as well. This is why I'm here. Okay, so now what is taking place is that America allowed Robert to present all of his evidence in 2008, which he really didn't have to present anything because again, he was the defendant. There was not enough evidence, so they threw it out. So he had no opportunity to have to share anything, any admission. So he said he didn't do it. That was it. It was understood in 2008. It wasn't enough evidence. So now they are allowing the opposition. So they're flipping the script. Prosecution and the government, it, well, the government is allowing the prosecution, which is the government. <laughs> See, the government, uh, that's all America is being spoken for from the voice of prosecution. So prosecution got a whole entourage of team members that is saying whether they file or not that wasn't a file yay keep going because it's not a fair court it's not there to be fair when you're on their turf they play how they choose and there are no rules except theirs so try not to get tarred up in their system because it's going to be a hell of a fight to get out it's not easy. It wasn't easy in 2008. And it's definitely not going to be easy in 2022. There was not enough evidence in 20 in 2008. So now there now the government and America even though I'm an American and I'm not on the prosecution side, even my voice says to the prosecution in their perspective of the court system that it's time to revisit what was not revisit it before. Let's open it up and allow everything that defense said back in 2008 to be used 
for this purpose right now. They're not going to unseal things from 2008 that is going to make them look bad. So the judge is going to give them and grant them that auspice. It's going to grant them that opportunity. No, nah, we won't unseal that. No, we'll keep dear goddess down there. He don't need to testify. Everybody knows who Jim was and that the fact that he was the one who anonymously dropped, you know, dropped to CNN the tape. So we don't need to go there because jurors already know that that's been discovered. So what's taking place is that America is allowing the, the, the victims, the witnesses, what they allowed Robert in 2008 to revisit or to visit what was not enough evidence back then because the same sort of circumstances arose decades later. And I have to keep reiterating that so you can understand. So the government is confused. So imagine the government saying, okay, we're going to do this like we did in 2008. We understand he was acquitted. That shouldn't be brought up because that was then, that was done, and it is separate. But it's not separate because years later, there is the same form of situation with a twist of obstruction. So now we don't know if you paid these people off. We don't know whatever we don't know. We're going to find out. So they're saying, obviously, government didn't look at something correctly back in 2008 because we're here revisiting again. Now what they're doing is allowing the witnesses and victims to share what they know. I think that's all this is. I don't care about what rules we break. Lennon Weber is saying, I don't give a dang. I'm not going to be here for six, eight, 12, 15 weeks. I want this thing knocked out in four weeks. So bring everybody in, all the witnesses, even if it's new people, bring them in. So that way we're done. We are done. Everything's going to get nipped in the bud in this courtroom in 2022 for this situation. So it'll never happen to arise again. They are doing this as at the expense of allowing things such as what we see looking as double jeopardy issues into the case just to get clarity because this is a public opinion case. It's like they want the world to be the decision maker. Kind of like I'm going to let any and everything in to sort this out, to find the truth and based on what's relevant, based on what everyday people or fact finders, in this case, the juror, jury, feels that's what it's going to be. Prosecution also knows that there is a huge chance that an appeal will go forward with this. So it doesn't matter. They don't care about the mistakes they're making. Let the Second Circuit deal with that. But again, during the fact finding, there may be the one there may be that one person who does not agree with this new obstruction charge that will make or break the 2008 case and allow everything to be thrown out. So let's go over some rules that Lennon Weber will be expressing in today's proceedings, August the 16th, that the jury is going to follow. And he will be giving rules that will allow or not allow information. This is what, this is why the defense hands are tied. Everything is muted on the defense side because if they say something in a way that could sway the jury, you may have that one. But we need to have that one juror, juror that will say it's not enough evidence without the defense saying anything. So I know why Bonjean and Robert is not saying anything right now other than what they can fight for to just put on the docket for the appeal process. Meaning there's an organization to this chart that will make the case and everything in it be understood when it's all said and done. This segment is viewed from the position of an appeal standpoint. 
So if this sounds different from what I normally talk to you about, please don't take your opinions offensively to me because it is what it is. I, this is not my case. I do sympathize. No, I don't sympathize. I empathize with Robert and what he's going through and the victims and the witness side based on the relationships that he had with these individuals. But the law looks at it differently. It sits on the sideline and judges. So, so put yourself in the judge seat. Put yourself in the juror seat. Do not put yourself in the defense's seat because the defense, Robert has already been there in his seat and we were there for him. And everything was right and just then. So let us just allow the system to work this thing out to literally see what it needs to see, okay? And even if the first time it sees something unjust, it doesn't mean that it is over because we have the appeal. So again, I'm not holding him 100% at fault for anything, you know? Just as I'm not holding the victims or witnesses at fault for anything. I'm just saying, let's get some clarity here. So please keep an open mind with the perspectives based on this process we're talking about today. Now, according to the American Bar Association, here is what the rules that the jury must follow in Lennon Weber's court. Number one. They are to arrive on, they are, they are to arrive on time and return promptly after breaks and lunch. The trial cannot proceed until all jurors are present. So they're going to be told today, be on time, do pay attention. If you cannot hear what is being said, raise your hand and let the judge know. Keep an open mind throughout the entire trial. Do not judge until the end. How a human can do that, I don't know, but okay. Jurors, do's and don'ts. Number four, do listen carefully to the instructions read by the judge. Remember, it is your duty to accept, accept what the judge says about the law to be applied to the case. So Lennon Weber is not going to go in and tell them, okay, so back in 2008, he might, he might say that, but... He might, he's not going to say, yo, you know, you heard this thing on a docuseries and I couldn't believe it. And it was like this and it was like that. No, Lennon Weber is going to say, listen, based upon the cases that you've read or heard in the docuseries that are, will be present is the only thing you are to take into consideration, not the other cases of whatever. Aaliyah or whatever, um, uh, Jim Dare Goddess, do not take that into account. If you have heard that through the court, um, through media, exclude that. Many jurors will then take notes and they will remind themselves in the deliberation room, do not include X, Y, Z. So it's going to be some rules. Um, listen to what the judge says about the law relating to Robert Sylvester Kelly and apply it to Robert Sylvester Kelly's case based upon what is presented in the court trial. Number five, don't try to guess what Lennon Weber is thinking about the case. It's not about him. He's going to tell them. He's going to tell them this case is not about what I believe. And I'm not going to hold bias to this case because what I say, it does matter, but I'm not going to sway your perspective. You do it as a team. Remember that rulings from the bench do not reflect the judge's personal views. Okay, so if that is seen in this trial, we know that that is room for appeal. Number five, don't try to guess what the judge thinks about the case. Remember that rulings from the bench does not reflect the judge's personal views. So we'll pay attention to what Lennon Weber is saying, why he's saying it, and apply it to the final. Because we don't know why he's saying it. We can't add up 
what is in his mind as a judge. He has 85 years experience with over 50, 60 years on the bench. So we don't know unless we've studied Lennon Weber his whole entire career, why he's thinking what he's thinking. So don't worry about that. We'll figure that out and put that on the back burner when we see it to apply that to the appeal for Jennifer to go after after this is over if it's not judged correctly. Number six, don't talk about the case or issues raised by the case with anyone, including other jurors while the trial is going on and do not let others talk about the case in your presence, even family members. <clears throat> Even family members, if someone insists on talking to you or another jury about the case, please report the matter to the court employee. So they're going to say, my husband, when I was intimate with him last night and after we finished our intimacy, you know, we were talking about how are you feeling emotionally about the case and this thing is just on my mind and I can't even share with my significant other, what I'm feeling as a juror on this serious case that could make or break something that I'm not sure about, I can't talk to my significant other or my husband, or he can't talk to his wife about what has gone on. And if they do talk, are they going to report it to the employee? These rules are designed to help you keep an open mind during the trial. Now, a lot of times this could work if it wasn't such an such a, a famous case like this. Number seven, don't talk to the lawyers, parties or witnesses about anything. This will avoid the impression that someone that something unfair is going on. <laughs> number eight, don't try to uncover evidence. Oh, let's go back to number seven. Don't talk to the lawyers, parties, or witnesses about anything. So Asa Krul, okay, well, maybe that's something else. Okay, I'm not sure. So don't talk to the lawyers, parties, or witnesses about anything. This will avoid the impression that something unfair is going on. So if we find out through media or somebody listening in the courtroom looking as an onlooker or observer that somebody has talked to somebody, report that. Report that immediately so that can be put on the docket, put on the books for the appeal. Don't try to uncover evidence on your own. Never, for example, go to the scene of an event that was part of the case you are hearing. You must decide the case only on the basis of evidence admitted in court. So if anybody sees that happening, anybody sees them um the jurors going and we don't know their names we don't know who they are we're not going to stalk or follow but we are going to pay attention of what is unfolding as it does because trust and believe people are going to be heard and they're going to see what they they're they're going to see some things don't let yourself get information about the case from the news media or any other outside source take their cell phones mm-hmm even if news reports are accurate and complete, they cannot substitute for your own impressions about the case. If you accidentally hear outside information about the case during trial, tell a member of the court staff in private. Why do you have to tell them in private? Why can't you put that on the docket? Just like anything that goes through the judge, you have to do it through the court employee on a note so that everything is kept, um, kept open. Hmm. Number 10, don't take notes during the trial unless the judge gives you permission to do so. Now, during deliberation, do work out differences between yourself. Okay, we'll talk about deliberations tomorrow um, because that's later. So that's what I wanted to break down to you today. Um, and, you know, this is a serious situation. This is very serious. And the obstruction of the information is what is going to go down today that none of us know at this point in time until everything is put on the on the trial docket and administered as fact, okay? They're saying, try not to lie. 
Try not to lie on the stand. And my very, my very thing is the reason to go to trial is to get people to be true and real and just so we can clear this stuff up. But many people don't have what it takes to be as truthful as they know they should. Um, and that's where we'll work things out because eventually the truth shows its face, regardless who's lying and how good they are. A manipulator always gets found out. A narcissist always gets found out. And that could be from prosecution side or defense side. So me, I tell you, Kelly Nation, please be an observer. This is not your court case. Yes, we have empathy for Robert and we pray that he gets out, you know, and, and it is successful and that from this point, he does not put himself in any area of circumstance that could create this fiasco again in his life. We pray that no new witnesses come forth with bullcrap because this is a media case and things can be brought up. But again, we'll know the fake from the real. That's, I think, the difference between the seven women of the docuseries that are part of this versus the other 48 or 30 something that came on um, or 40 something that came on saying that it happened to me too. So yeah. And then I also want you to pay attention to the laws that are taking place as the trial is going forward. What other um, indictments are being sent out? What other celebrities are in trouble? Pay attention to all that because it all matters. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and describing, and uh, describing, <laughs> yeah, describing this podcast to people <laughs> and subscribing to this podcast. Please continue to be a part of the R. Kelly Appeal TV with your comments. We thank you all new subscribers for being here. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button. So you'll know when we're coming on. We're normally always going to be on anytime at 6 p.m., but definitely on Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much. And we will see you soon on the rules and guidelines of deliberation during the deliberation, because that's going to be coming up. So you'll get an understanding when you hear what's going on in the media, what these people are talking about. Because if you don't know, you do, just don't know. And then you get lost. And then you, you're misunderstanding because you have people who don't know the law telling you their opinions on their channels that does not relate to the true legalities of things. So peace and blessings. And as always, keep it 100. And we'll see you next time.